So a few weeks after the election has finally concluded, we are now starting to see the formal and official transfer of power between the president administrations for Donald Trump and now the incoming president-elect Joe Biden. Now, this was a process that has been held up for 16 days now. As a matter of fact, this is definitely one of the weirdest presidential elections I've ever personally seen. Now, I'm 20 years old, right? So I don't remember Bush and Gore when they ran against one another in the presidential election. That was a complete mess when it happened. But through everything I can remember, uh, like the, the Bush and Obama presidential race, when Obama first got elected, that seemed pretty, you know, seamless. The second Obama presidency, even going into the Trump presidency after he beat Hillary Clinton, it seemed like everything went fine, right? Like there was uh, no hiccups. So this is definitely maybe the wonkiest election that I've ever personally seen, right? There's been so much going on with it from the claims of election fraud to recounts in certain states to the lawsuits from the Trump administration that were widely lost or dismissed, which is basically also a loss for the Trump administration. It's been pretty odd, but now we're finally starting to see, I guess, the fruits of the presidential election come through. The Trump administration has taken the first step to actually formally recognize that Biden apparently won the election and that he will be the next president of the United States. Now, this is kind of a very confusing process, right? Like, it's not something that a lot of people actually ever really learn about, right? Because, like, I went to school, we learn, you know, like, the three branches of government, like, what the president actually does. We learn about the Constitution, checks and balances, you know, separation of church and state, all kinds of different things like that, right? But it, it's very rare, if ever, that you ever actually hear anything about the transfer of power. Which, if you think about it, is a very important part of the entire process, right? Because you look at a lot of fledgling countries right now that are just now really starting to build up constitutions or democracies, or it's like their first few decades of voting and things like that. It's kind of a mess in a lot of places. Because the person in power, even though they've been voted out through the democratic process or whatever, a lot of the times they don't accept the results, right? They don't accept it and they stay in power and they just refuse to leave. Now in the United States, historically, that's never happened, right? Like it, it seems like it's been pretty peaceful, pretty easy transition of power, no real big issues. But this is like the first one that I've actually seen where there was even a hiccup, it seems like, at least that I can remember. I mean, maybe I'm wrong on this, but this is the first one that I personally remember. And... It lasted about 16 days. Uh, of course, a lot of it really kind of uh, hinged around the fact that Trump wasn't really ready to accept the results. He didn't want to acknowledge Biden as the winner. The Trump campaign filed dozens of lawsuits in different states and areas and stuff. Uh, they made a lot of claims about election fraud and all kinds of different things. But now finally, a little over two weeks into this entire thing, they're finally starting to move the process forward. Now, President Donald Trump claims that he gave the green light for the General Services Administration to start moving forward. Now, the administrator of the GSA, Emily Murphy, actually disputes this claim. So Trump is making the claim that he basically went to the General Service Administration and said, hey, let's start moving this forward. Basically, Trump won, or I mean, uh, Biden won, so we need to go ahead and just move forward with this entire situation and just, you know, start the formal transition process. That's what Trump is claiming. But Emily Murphy makes the claim that she did this independently with no pressure from the White House to make any sort of, I guess, descriptions to make any moves, anything. So a clear conflict of uh, what happened in terms of the details there. Trump ended up tweeting out, quote, I believe we will prevail nevertheless in the best interest of our country. I am recommending that Emily and her team do what needs to be done with regard to initial protocols and have told my team to do the same. Now, I kind of want to explain this process because I think that it's very important that people know about this. So the transition of power happens shortly after the election, pretty much every cycle. Now, basically what is being done now, what has been, I guess, unlocked, okay? First is more than $7 million for the Joe Biden team to basically start their transition process. They can use that $7 million to set themselves up going into the presidency. They can use it to, I guess, establish themselves a little bit, which is pretty good, right? I mean, politically, $7 million is not that much money, but I mean, it seems like it's worked pretty well before when it comes down to them actually using their funds. And then on top of that, it actually allows the top advisors in the Biden campaign to start outreaching to, you know, different leaders of federal agencies, the representatives from these agencies to start, I guess, a, a communication line and to get ground set up to move forward after he is inaugurated as president. So... I think a big thing that a lot of people uh, misinterpret about the election is that pretty much the night that it happens, it's set in stone, right? Like, like, you know, it took us a few days to really figure out that Biden won the election, right? 
but there's actually four key dates that haven't even come up yet that are fundamental in actually confirming his presidency. So while this money's been unlocked and everything is going forward with the transition process, there's still four more dates that need to happen with different events to confirm that he will be the next president of the country. Now at this point, there's a 99.99999 infant nines percent chance that he's going to be the next president. He won the, he won the popular vote. As of now, he's won the electoral vote threshold of 270 electoral votes. The federal government has now basically started the transition process. It's pretty official, you know what I'm saying? There's a very, very, very small chance though, however, that Biden's win may not count or it may get revoked. Now, it really has nothing to do with the claims of voter fraud that the Trump administration and Trump fan base, I guess, has been making. In fact, it's actually on the federal level. So on December 8th, which isn't that far away, by the way, is the deadline for resolving any disputes about the election at the state level, okay? All state recounts, any court contests over the uh, results, they have to be completed by this date. Now, Trump and his campaign have already basically gotten this out of the way. They, they filed a lot of lawsuits in different states, and they made a big push to recount in places, and they lost pretty much all of it. I mean, I think they won like one court case out of 25. It, it didn't really fare well for them. So this is pretty much, I would say, not necessarily something that is needed at this point because, well, in all reality, the election disputes are pretty much over. Now, on December 14th is when electors will vote by paper ballot in their respective states and in the District of Columbia, you know, Washington, D.C. Now, 33 states and the District of Columbia have laws or party regulations that require the electors to vote the same way that the popular vote goes in that state. And in some places, electors can be replaced or subjected to penalties if they refuse to do so. Now, this is actually possible. These people are called faithless electors, and we saw them in the last election as well. Basically, like I live in Ohio, right? Now, Donald Trump won the state of Ohio. When you look at the voting count, right? When you look at the counties that were broken down, the more rural areas slash Rust Belt areas were the ones that Trump did very well in. But in the major metropolitans like Cleveland, Toledo, Columbus... Cincinnati, Dayton, that's where actually Biden kind of won because in all reality, Democrats tend to win like the major metropolitan areas. And that's why you see states like California, New York, that they went Democrat and they usually do go Democrat because usually the more the population is there, there's a little bit of a bigger chance that they vote Democrat, you know, recently, especially. But let's say in Ohio, even though Trump won, uh, you know, one of the electors here in Ohio decides, you know, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to elect Trump. They can actually, in some states, switch over to the other side and vote against the popular vote of their state, which, by the way, I think is absolutely ridiculous. First off, it stands against what you're supposed to be as a representative of the state. You're there to represent the people and what they voted for. You're not there to represent yourself. And second off, I think it should just be illegal. I don't think that this should even be a concern. This is stupid. The whole point of the vote is to have us be heard. It's our time to choose the president, not some asshole at the top. And so that'll be happening December 14th when the electors will actually uh, be doing their, their voting. So then by December 23rd, their certificates must be delivered to officials. Now, if they're not delivered, there's laws that actually will provide alternative ways of getting the results to Washington. It's not like if they don't send it through, their vote doesn't count or anything. There's ways around this. Now, this is the last major date of this year. Then on January 6th of 2021, the House and the Senate will hold a joint session to count the electoral votes, and then when or if one ticket receives 270 or more electoral votes, the President of the Senate will announce the results. Currently, that is Vice President Mike Pence. Now, there is a possibility that a candidate does not get 270 electoral votes. This is pretty unlikely considering we have a bipartisan system. It's basically just Trump and Biden. But there's a chance that if like Kanye West, you know, picked up some of these electoral votes or something, which is pretty unlikely, that a party would not be able to reach 270 votes. Now, if that happened, the House decides the election. This is based on the 12th Amendment in the Constitution. Each state delegation would have one vote out of all 50 states, and it would take 26 votes to win, so basic popular majority. And if that were to happen, it would still remain pretty likely that Biden would win the election, because I'm pretty sure that both presidential candidates actually won 25 states apiece, but since Joe Biden won the popular vote, I'm pretty sure they would lean with him. 
And then, of course, on January 20th, that's Inauguration Day. That would be the day that the next president is sworn in and everything, which will likely be Joe Biden. So the whole transition process has started. It seems pretty official at this point. There's still four more important dates to go, but as of right now, there's pretty much minimal chance that Trump has any opportunity to use any of those days to actually win this election. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel, follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at Sub to Optimus. Make sure to check out Shop Opti down below. Thank you to my channel members. Your support helps my channel tremendously. And until my next video, guys, this is Optimus Well, watching uh, the, the presidential transition here and signing out.